for the second part of the split call, Chris Hipkins. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, quite frankly, I think this bill's a bit rubbish, actually. I, but the Labour Party, the Labour Party is going to support this bill to a select committee and let people have a say on it. But we have serious concerns. I have to say we're not guaranteeing supporting it past the select committee process. Let's be clear about what this bill is. This is the price the National Party were willing to pay in order to be able to hock off those SOEs. This is the price. And in fact, it says so, it says so under the general policy statement of the bill. It's very clear. The very first line of the bill admits that the reason we're even debating it is because that's what they had to give Peter Dunn in order to get him to agree to hocking off the state assets. Hocking off the state assets, even though he told the voters of Ohio before the election that he didn't think selling state assets was a good idea. It says here, right at the very beginning, the general policy statement, the, ver the very first sentence, the Game Animal Council Bill delivers on the government's confidence and supply agreement with the United Future Party. This is the price of the asset sales. This is, what they, this is what they were willing to pay in order to get Peter Dunn. I have to say to Peter Dunn, if this was the price, he should have been asking for more. He should have been asking for more because those state assets that he is going to vote to hock off are worth a heck of a lot more than this piece of legislation. Mr Speaker, the, there are real concerns with this bill. And in fact, the government, the government, the government are willing to pay the price that Peter Dunn has extracted out of them, despite the fact that the regulatory impact statement, the government's own regulatory impact statement, says that the proposal has the highest regulatory burden. The highest regulatory burden. This from the red tape cutting government. This from the government that was all against red tape. Not a word from the ACT Party on this, who are the great red tape cutters and all about reducing regulation. This bill that has the highest regulatory burden, that this, the National Party are going to support it because that's the price they had to pay to get Peter Dunn's one vote, their one vote majority to hock off the state assets. That's what they were willing to pay. What else did the regulatory impact statement? It said this bill is likely to have the highest costs and be the least aligned to the current wild animal control regime and legislative framework. Once again, another indictment in the regulatory impact statement that this national government are willing to put up with in order to get Peter Dunn's one vote. Officials recommend establishing the Game Animal Council as an advisory committee, it says in the regulatory impact statement. But, oh, oh no, not for the national government. They don't really care about it, providing they get their one vote from Peter Dunn to pay it to in order to support their asset sales, because this is a government that are barely scraping through with one of the most unpopular, unpopular changes that we have seen from any government in the last few decades, the hocking off of state assets, which New Zealanders don't agree with, which Peter Dunn told the voters of Ohio before the election he didn't agree with, and now he's voting for it in exchange for them supporting the Game Animal Council bill. Now, the, uh, to return to some of, the, some of the core concerns with the bill, this bill undermines the position of the Department of Conservation. And in fact, there are serious and legitimate concerns being raised by people about pest control. The Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment has raised concerns about the impact this bill could have on pest control and effectively 1080, huge, huge topic of debate in my electorate, the use of 1080 poison, but it works. And it has worked, and yet this Game Animal Council being established by this bill could seriously curtail the use of 1080, the use of 1080, which has had a fantastic, a fantastic impact. Now, yes, it's a, it's a point of huge debate. There are people in my electorate that are passionately opposed to the use of 1080, and they come along to all the Meet the Candidates meetings before an election, and they tell me that they are. But it has worked. And we have, we have bird life back in the, hut, the hills around the Hutt Valley that we're missing for quite some time, and largely because of the use of 1080. So why should the Game Animal Council have the ability to undermine that? And it's the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment, an independent officer of Parliament, who is telling the government this, and they are simply turning a blind eye to that. This bill is not a good bill. It is the price the government were willing to pay to get Peter Dunn to vote for state asset sales, despite telling the people that voted for him before the last election that he would not do so. This bill is misnamed. This bill is misnamed. In fact, it's actually only about, it's all about defending one endangered species. 
for Peter Dunn, endangered species. This is what this bill is all about, protecting and forget about anything else. It's about protecting the endangered species that is Peter Dunn. And I say to the House that come the next election, when Peter Dunn's judge, point of he order, will be removed. Order, a point of order. The previous speaker, Mr Speaker, refused to allow, um, or the member here, Todd Clay, referred to Grant Roberts as, a, as a, pointing out that he wasn't an endangered species. So. Uh, it, well, it is a point of order, but it, the, I think the comment made by Todd McClay was made in an entirely different context. <laughs> uh, but the member's time has expired. Thank you. There is one call remaining. To Paul Goldsmith. Mr Speaker, thank you. I think uh, listening to the speeches on the other side of the House uh, has confirmed to me why uh, both those parties have struggled to get much support in provincial and rural New Zealand, because they're out of touch with the concerns and interests of those people. I, it's fair to say, it's, it's fair to say there is not much in the uh, way order. of uh, game animals in Epsom, uh, but uh, there are plenty of pigs. There oh, are plenty of pigs to be found in the Look, if members want to have a debate, they can go out into the lobby. This cross-chat is not helpful to the occasion. Paul Goldsmith. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, look, I, I'm, I'm delighted to support this bill to go to the Select Committee for consideration. I think it's a, uh, a worthwhile bill. Um, we could... Uh, there, there is room for everybody in the conservation the state in New Zealand uh, and a wide range of interests, and uh, this makes good sense. Uh, that we can uh, have allow people who are interested in hunting game to get out there and have some say and involvement in the organisation of this thing. So, look, I, I won't trespass on the time of the House, but I do support this bill. Thank you very much. The debate has now concluded, so the question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. Ayes have it. Party vote. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. Th 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 votes opposed. New Zealand First. I think it's about to Māori Party. Votes in favour. Mana. <laughs> Act New Zealand. United Futures. In favour. <laughs> A point of order, Michael Woodhouse. I seek leave to cast a vote on behalf of the ACT Party. Was the ACT Party not called? Uh, it was, and I'm afraid I missed it. Uh, leave is sought for that purpose. Is there anyone opposed to that course of action? Uh, well, we, no, look, let's just clarify this. We, we've gone past the call for ACT. The member's asking for that to be uh, noted. Leave is sought for that purpose. Is there anyone opposed to that? Point of order, Chris Hopkins. Point of order, Mr uh, Speaker. As, as, far, as I am aware, the standing orders require that uh, any member can correct a vote during, the, during that vote being undertaken. Right. Uh, it's like they only need to have leave to do so if the, if right the vote has okay. been read out. I'll, I'll accept the member and, and I'll instruct the clerk to record the vote. So Act is now recorded. One vote in favour. And the ayes are 97, the noes are 23, the motion is agreed to. Game Animal Council Bill, first reading. So the question now is that the Game Animal Council be considered by the Local Government and Environment Committee. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. The ayes have it. Aye. Party vote. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 votes opposed. New Zealand First. <coughs> votes opposed. Māori Party. Two votes in favour. Mana. One vote opposed. Act New Zealand. One vote in favour. United Future. One vote in favour. The ayes are 97, the noes are 23. The motion is agreed to. Call on Government Order of the Day number 6.